place and follow the DA's law, the location of it, and right back there on the wall, uh, the poster. And the time is 7.30. Call to order. Bill Mayer. Here. Donna. Here. Jacobson. President. Kleinschmidt. Yes. Bye-bye. Yes. None. Yes. Oshner. Yes. Chokoff. Yes. Milley. Yes. I'm going to declare this a declaration of a legal meeting that this is a regular meeting of February 14th, 2011. We declare a legal meeting. Roll call. Jacobson? Yes. Kleinschmidt? Yes. Donovan? Yes. Lightwing? Yes. None? Yes. Oshner? Yes. Chokoff? Yes. Don't mind that. No. Yes. No absence is too much. Uh, we'll start off with welcoming our visitors and opening this up to any correspondence that we have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight, I guess, after listening and reading a lot of information, I'd like to speak to the board a little bit about the the Veterans Day fiasco or the Veterans Day situation that happened with, with between the Board of Education and the Fillmore County American Legion Post, the Geneva. In looking at the situation, reading through it and everything, it's become apparent that a lot of things happened that maybe happened out of sequence, happened because of mistakes, errors, or whatever. When the American Legion was asked to help work with the school system to get a speaker for Veterans Day, as they have in the past, they obtained a speaker. The information was sent to the school. There was no existence, no notification of any type of policy, any type of restrictions, or anything of this nature. Shortly before the situation came around, the school contacted the American Legion Post and says, well, can't, we want to cancel the speaker because we do not think he's appropriate. The speaker was contacted by the American Legion Group in Geneva as a qualified speaker on Veterans Day. He was not here to give a political speech. He was not here as an individual. He was here as an as a individual of a government organization as part of their Speaker's Bureau. That's what he was here for. He has an impeccable military history, an impeccable history. He served in the United States Air Force. He joined in 1980, in 19, I have to look at my notes here, 1955. He has served, he has Bronze Star, he has numerous medals. Uh, he, was, he would have been an outstanding speaker for the students to hear. Somebody to be able to, to hear that has extensive veteran service. Veteran service is one of the things that this country has been built on. It's why we can be here tonight, why we can speak freely, why we have freedom of speech, why we have freedom of religion. They have preserved those rights. Many have died, many have been wounded. Many have suffered, and that needs to be remembered. That needs to be honored. Somehow in this process, that got compromised. Suppose it was because of his political views. Has he spoken as an individual? Yes, he has. Has he spoken of political events as an individual? Yes, he has. Does he have a political view? Yes, he does. So do you folks. You all have political views, same as I do. So that kind of bothered me a little bit. If it was because of his affiliation with one particular group of, of political activists, that's immaterial. Because he was here to speak about veterans and what veterans have done for this country. That's why he was here. And that's, that's it. As a result, harm was done to the American Legion Post in Geneva. We can no longer request speakers from the Speaker Bureau because of this event. So this is going to have some long-lasting effects. There have been some other repercussions that are starting to occur between the Legion and the school, which are not in our best interests. It's not in anybody's best interests. We need to stop it. We need to get it back in control. Together, not just the school, not the American Legion. We're not trying to dictate to anybody, or the American Legion is not trying to dictate to anybody. We just want to know what the rules are. We'll work with the rules. The thing is, at this point in time, there supposedly was a policy that was followed concerning speakers. 
I know of no board policy that I've been able to find anywhere. Administration does not have a policy because if they have had a policy, it would have been approved by the board. So to say that there was a policy that when none can be produced and has not been produced, apparently is incorrect. It's misleading people. If there was a policy, it would have been given to the American Legion Post in Geneva. I would think. Since then, many people have asked for that policy that's not been produced. The assumption is that no policy exists. The school stated there was a policy, and there isn't a policy. They misled the public, and they misled everybody else. That's why you're not, you're not here for that purpose, folks. You know that. You're charged with a massive responsibility in the education of our youngsters. You're charged with the, with the responsibility to expose them to different views and ideas and, and things accurately. And there are limitations. I don't argue that point. And there may be things that some students may not want to, parents may not want some students to attend for some reason or other. And that can easily be handled by a policy. It's not a big deal. But we haven't done that. All we have is a mess. And veterans are upset countywide and beyond the county. This has drawn public discussion far beyond the borders of Fillmore County. As a resident of Fillmore County and this school district, I'm ashamed to have people saying that about us. I'm ashamed. I am a veteran. I feel strongly about, about what our veterans have sacrificed for this country. I feel very, very strongly. We're not talking 50 or 100 people. We're talking hundreds of thousands of people that have served to preserve our freedoms. And that's all we were doing, one small portion. Apparently, the governor's not even allowed to speak here because of his political affiliations. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I don't understand. Now, obviously, I can't ask you to put something on the agenda because it can't be at this point. I understand that. I understand that you have your internal procedures that you have to use. I understand that, too. But today, the school hasn't taken the ball and says, hey, we need to fix this. So I'm asking. I'm pleading. Simply, all I want, and all I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll rephrase it. All that is wanted, I'm not going to say what I, all that is wanted is that the schools start the process of developing a speaker's policy and that there be public input to, obtained in doing this. If they do it by committee of citizens in the school or whatever, that's fine. That's, that's, your, that's kind of within your purview. That's not my job or my purview to dictate that to you. I can request consideration, but that's as far as it can go. Would like to see that done and develop a policy that goes to the board and is approved by the board. If, we, if the school misrepresented themselves and as a result the, the American Legion took a pretty black eye, I'd like to see an apology to the American Legion members here in Geneva from the board and the situation corrected. I'm not asking for somebody's head on a platter. I'm not asking to have somebody put on a firing squad. All I'm asking is that it be corrected and the relationships between the school and American Legion members and veterans in this county and other areas be rectified. I don't think there was a full intent that it had, had these type of ramifications, but it has. We can't, we can't go back and unring the bell. We can fix it, but we can't unring it. If the board is willing to, to consider, pursue this, which I hope they are, I think we can, I would hope that we can come to a resolve of something that's going to be in everybody's best interest. There isn't anybody that wants to see our students not well educated. There is not anybody that wants to see something presented to our students that's inaccurate or improper or not truthful. There's nobody that wants to see that. We have an interest in our students because they're our leaders of tomorrow. One last comment that I'm going to make, and that's it, because I said probably too much already. One last comment that has to do with the existence of public law 108-447, section 111, 
passed by Congress, which requires school districts receiving federal funds to commemorate the date of September 17th as 17th of the week, actually the week is 17th to the 23rd, as Constitutional Week. Now, if we stop and think about it, just a split second, what governs this country? It is the Constitution. How can we take part in the things envisioned by this country if we don't understand that Constitution? If we don't know what it means, what it says. It's not a living document. It's a blueprint. It's a foundation. And that law was passed in 2004. Not something I understand that we do here in Fillmore County. I don't care what other school districts do. I really don't care. But I do care what ours does. And I know that others do too. If it's a law, it's a law. If, if, if it's a law and we're going to disregard the law, is that the message we want to send to our, to our students? I don't think so. Or I hope not anyway. So, if you would take a look at that, and review it. Do all schools do it? No, they don't, probably. Should we be doing it? Yes. Should we be teaching our students that? Yes. They should understand that very thoroughly. Is it political? Absolutely. The process is going on right now in Washington. It's going on in Fillmore County. It's going on at, at City Hall right now. It's going on right here. So is it political? Yeah, it is. Are we trying to make one opinion better than the other? No. We have to understand that it's political and teach them, our students what the limits are, where the authorities rest, and how it works. We're going to lose it. We fought too hard and too long to have a country such as we have. We have what is called the unique experiment. We, the people, have made it work. Let's continue. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Transportation Committee and I I think we did a lot of work had good discussions went through the information and they'll have something to present to you when we get down to item, I think it's item F tonight so, um, I had sent the board some notes Karen Hawsey will be uh, addressing our staff on the I think it's the 18th of February it's a Friday uh, this Friday uh, concerning the use of Facebook, texting, social concerns, ways, things to avoid, not to get themselves in trouble, and the do's and don'ts, and the board is welcome to attend if they'd like to. All of our staff will, will be there. We have an in-service day this Friday, regularly scheduled in-service day. Um, I think when I sent you the calendars we're gonna look at tonight, I think in my writing I confused A and B but I think they'll be self-explanatory once we get to that part. In your folder there should be some purple board policies with three hole punches. Those are to go in your board policy book and replace the same numbers. I think it was mainly the change in our mission statement. That's what we corrected on there. So make sure you put those in your uh, board folders. Uh, don't forget, we need a board picture tonight before we leave. I need a picture of Alia or Jody. My secretary will be very angry, so we need to get that done. Uh, at the state wrestling tournament this weekend, we had three uh, wrestlers qualify, and one of the mats for the finals is going to be our new mat, the Pee Wee Wrestling Club. And from the Central purchased a new mat and split it half and half, and so. The way this company does it, they'll give you a discount if they make it and they take it to Omaha and they use it in the state tournament, then our job is just to get it back here, but we get money off to do it that way, plus it's on TV if you want to look at it. So it should have an FC or something on there that you should be able to recognize. 
Um, the last thing I'd, I'd send in here and I would like to offer